Stugatz here for 4 Man, getting old stinks. It really does. I'm getting up there in age. Hair starting to fall out. It is an absolute mess. Did you know that 66% of men lose their hair by the age of 35? Thing is, when you start to notice hair loss, it's too late. Do you want a bald spot to pop up or do you want to do something about it first? That's why you need to visit 4 a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and other wellness supplements for men. Genius! Thanks to science, baldness can be optional. Hims connects you with real doctors and medical-grade solutions to treat hair loss. They have well-known generic equivalents to the name-brand prescriptions to help you keep your hair. No snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements. Instead, prescription solutions backed by science. No waiting room, no awkward doctor visits. Save hours by going to 4 Just answer a few quick questions. The doctor will review your answers and give you a prescription. And products are shipped directly to your door. It is that easy. It is that convenient. It is awesome. Order today. And our listeners get a trial month of hymns for just $5 while supplies last. See website for full details. This would cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or a pharmacy. Go to 4 slash Levitard. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash Levitard. 4 com slash Levitard. Squirrels are known for saving, but with the help of AARP, they won't be the only ones. From planning to budgeting, AARP is here to help you stretch your dollar further. So take on today and every day with AARP. Learn how at takeontoday.aarp. You can't with this team. Four of six. Went two straight series. We're not even going to tank right. We're 9-18 and 18 right now. We're going to get like the sixth pick. Nice this is going to be all for nothing. Nice little team. That's the thing is that this is a nice little team. You know, I was conflicted yesterday, Chris. Why? Yesterday, my family for the first time went to a Marlins game, and I said, I'm not going. I refused to go to the game yesterday. I didn't want to go. I didn't get a cafecito cup. I said, no, I'm not going. What? Yeah. Have you only been to opening day? I only went to opening day this year. Wait a minute. You, so you're having a stage personal boycott except for opening day. Um, yeah, well, mm, here's the thing. I'm very conflicted because I've never said no before to a game. Like They were like, let's go get cafecito cups. And I'm like, mm, I don't want to go. And I was like, okay, but that doesn't sound like a boycott. No, it is. No, well, that's, I don't want to go. Right. Well, no, I was like conf- a- no, that was that was the conflict inside of me. Well, I mean, believe is- it, believe in it, though. Like, have some conviction about it. Don't be. Well, conflicted. they have some cool giveaways. That's the problem. Say. They just need like a little bit better of a giveaway. Yeah, like they, they almost have, had. Them. They have like a floral print, like <laughs> jersey or something this year. Like, I think I'm gonna have to go to that game. But it's hard. And here's the thing, Dan. I started looking on StubHub because I'm. This is how I'm rationalizing it. I'm like, if I go to StubHub, I'm not giving the Marlins my money. So I'm still not giving them the money, and I'm still kind of staying strong. To the, the prices were ridiculous on StubHub yesterday. Wanted to go like four people, like fifty dollars a ticket. That team is hot. You should check out Vivid Seats. <laughs> Did you guys see the numbers Good job, on Mets Marlins? No. Did you guys see the attendance, attendance numbers? numbers? Because now they're no longer fudging the attendance. Met- Samson isn't bleeping numbers. So. Game one. This is Mets Marlins. You want to you want to hear this, Dugats? Are you aware of this? This is paid attendance. Mets Marlins. I'd love to hear this. Yeah, I'm not aware of it. Game one, seven thousand three fans. Game two, six thousand five hundred and sixteen fans. And then game three, six thousand one hundred and fifty fans. And according. Um, Tonight's paid attendance for Mets Marlins at 7,003. So the first crowd was the smallest announced crowd ever for a game at Marlins Park. Before that, the worst attendance was never below 10,000. And then after game one, they went down three. They, they kept going down somehow from the worst attendance. That's the Mets! Right. That's a team you would draw for, that's yes. The, that's the Mets! Yeah. That, that's not the Reds. That's the New York team we should get... Just Mets. My guess is there were probably more Mets fans there than Marlins fans. They had like a five thousand night like attended game the other day. Every 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 couple days, yeah. I mean, if you want to see records be set, go, well, don't go to the Marlins game because then you're not helping set the record. But every <laughs> night they're setting records. The morning show actually does this funny thing, Zaslo, where they play like they they have like this big you know pomp and circumstance, and they announce the attendance, and then Zaslo celebrates when they set a new record, which is happening like all the time. By the way. Statistics, huh, 
I'm so over statistics, Dan. You can do anything with these numbers. Let me read you a tweet that I saw this weekend. Hold on a second. Just real quick. Those numbers I gave you on attendance, that was from Jared Diamond on Twitter. I don't want to be stealing stuff. Go ahead. That was like a month ago. They haven't played the Mets since like the okay. second series of the year. Okay. I'm just telling you that those are crazy numbers. Would have been crazier if you told us right after the series, you know? Uh, he did. Uh, this might be him aging. Or you gave uh, us like the lower numbers, which has come after the Mets. But doesn't did he credit matter. Jared Diamond at the time, or no? This is a new okay. twist on an old classic. All right, good. <laughs> Sounds like you're blaming Jared Diamond. When was that tweet from from Jared Diamond? Did he do know. this? It's like in yesterday? my phone. I don't know. It's just somewhere in my phone. Let's move on. All right, we so, don't have to move on. We can stay right here. But did you right save here. it? Did if you, you guys put a, want did you to examine it? it? It's fine. Did you heart Jared Diamond's tweet? Is that what you did? Because there's no way no, you just pull it up I, and it's there. I didn't heart Jared Diamond's tweet. By the way, can we close the damn roof also? Like, it was 90 degrees yesterday. Why are they playing with the roof open Sunday at 1 o'clock? With, are they trying to save money on the air conditioning? Is that what's going on here? Because why was the roof open again yesterday? It's ridiculous. We built a roof so no one would have to sit in the heat. And people had to sit in the heat yesterday. That's not why they, that's not why they built the roof. Oh, they built the roof because of that. <laughs> that's not why they built the roof. They built the roof and they moved the team because the football stadium they were playing in had too many rainouts during the summer months. So the heat is part of the issue, but it was primarily rainouts and rain keeping fans away. They didn't think baseball was sustainable in a football park if they couldn't uh, keep the rain away during the summer, which you can't, obviously, around here. But it might be something that Derek Jeter doesn't know. Well, here's here's a live. No, no, no wait. It might Jer- be Derek something. Jeter. The heat might. He might not know that sometimes we have to close the roof down here for heat. Why would he know it? Why would Derek Jeter know that sometimes for heat, it could be a beautiful day because yesterday was a beautiful day. Beautiful. So maybe he thinks the roof should stay open because it's a beautiful day and he doesn't realize how hot it gets down here. Because he was in his suite with his air conditioning. Here's a live d for you, Derek Jeter. d by the way, are their little booths that they have. They're like picture booths and you can record like, hey, I really think that we should have more fries with our hot dogs or whatever they want. Here's a d Close the roof when it's hot out. No one wants to sit in a hot stadium at 1 o'clock on a Sunday. It's terrible. Wow. Anyways, moving on. No one wants Dan. to sit in an air conditioning stadium. <laughs> no one wants to sit in that ballpark. Well, there's like 11,000 people Wait, that wanted to yesterday. Except for your family of, tra- of traders. Your traitorous family. They wanted those coffee cups. They're cool know. cafecito cups with the Marlins logo you, on it. You, yeah. You're the flimsiest boycott. Put it on the poll. Is Guillermo <laughs> the flimsiest boycotter in the history of I didn't go. Of I stayed strong. I, if stuff up prices were a little lower, maybe I would have been there. But I stayed strong. Is Part Guillermo- of it is because I'm locked in now, Dan. Like I can't be seen there because then people are going to be like, hey, what are you doing here? You've been saying not to go. <laughs> Put it on the poll, That's what it is, huh? When the roof is closed, it's too cold in there. There's not enough body heat. There's not enough people in there. It's just too, like, that's I'm a shivering. Good point. If that's you a good say point. so. That's what? A, that's a, that's a point. ridiculous point. That's a good that air, point. I don't think that air ever worked, by the way, because I was in there last year a lot, and I was sweating half the time, and the roof was closed. I think that they were pinching pennies on the air conditioning and not turning it on. The lower level in the, the lower deck, oh, my God, right under the air conditioning, it is literally, fr- I need a sweater. I love the idea of, like, half the stadium feeling and being an actual Turkish bath where people, like, the gross mildewy smells, the, the, the stuff that you would get when, you know, water is pooling in a corner for too long, whatever whatever comes of that greenery. Just I, I think part of the stadium should be sort of rainforest. But that's how it is because the air doesn't circulate properly. So there's parts that are freezing and parts that are like really hot. If you sit in the upper deck, which is never open, but if they open the upper deck and people sit there, it's so hot up yeah. there. So hot up there. That's funny. People are saying they like it much better when the roof is open. The Texans are saying. Not at 1 o'clock on a Sunday. I'm just telling you. It's I haven't hot been there, there in three years. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> The nights are cooler sometimes when it's night. It's like 78 degrees and you get like a breeze. Guillermo. Yes. You stayed home alone yesterday. Your entire family left. Like a gaggle of Cubans left for the ballpark and you stayed behind with your flimsy protest that might be broken the moment they have a better giveaway. Well, here's another thing about the cafecito cups that I can tell you. So they don't give away the cafecito cups when you go in. They give you a voucher and then you need to wait in a line to get it. But... 
Well, I'm assuming it's because a couple years ago, Cody Ross hit this like awesome walk-off home run on cowbell night, and they just all started throwing the cowbells on the field to celebrate. And then they had to delay Willie Chiduno's concert on Super <laughs> Saturday because they were picking up all the cowbells. It was a whole ordeal. I remember. I was there to see Ken Griffey at his 600th home run. Didn't happen that day. Happened a couple days later when I had foot surgery. I missed that game. Anyways, so they don't ha- they don't give away the cups now anyways on the way in anymore. They give you vouchers so you can redeem it on the way out. But... People are afraid that they're going to run out of these cafecito cups, which I think if you get a voucher, you're good. So you have to go after the fifth inning or after the f- halfway through the fifth, whatever. So my family went and they left early to get these cafecito cups. So it's like driving people away, this new policy of go get your things. <laughs> okay. And by the way, they had to wait in line for half an hour because the people weren't ready in the fifth inning like they were told to be. Well, speaking of bad attendance in Miami, uh, did you guys get mad at Ilya Sova all over again? Because oh, this yeah, He's guy. a jerk. I mean, oh, enough. Oh, man. Stay in your lane, man. I saw that tweet last night, and I gripped my steering wheel tight after wow. it. I was so mad. All right, wait a minute. Let me explain to the audience what it is that Ilya Sova is saying. Ilya Sova is talking about going into Boston. He's like, there, you'll feel it. In Miami, you get there, and the place is half empty. And it's true. At tip-off, it usually is, because as we've said before, everybody's in the bathrooms doing cocaine. Speaking of which, I ran into that this weekend in a fun way. Cocaine? Cocaine? Listen, I'll tell you the story. I'm in a place where there are four bathrooms, and all four bathrooms are closed for a period of time that seems unreasonable. And so we're assuming this isn't about going to the bathroom. Those, these, all four of these bathrooms must have people using cocaine. And so we, our group swings open a door and was like, nope, that one was pooping. <laughs> But the other three. Yeah. You're certain. Well, when we swung open one door, it was four women in there. Four women in a very tiny bathroom together. A bathroom for what? Pooping? All of them. Wow. Weirdly. Erotically. If you watch Gringo. You guys got to see this documentary, by the way. It, it this, this McAfee guy. This, this, this anti-virus McAfee guy. This is one of the craziest stories I've ever seen. I mean, I knew he was crazy before, but this is whole other levels of crazy. Let me explain something to you. Spoiler alert. Three of his lady friends on camera told the story. I, if you don't like this with your breakfast, like get out of here now because this is disgusting what I'm about to say. You mean spoilers. If you guys don't want to know what I'm about to say, just in the middle of this movie, Stugatz, this uh, Jim McAfee, yeah. he's a antivirus multimillionaire who probably killed a dude or had someone kill a dude. And this... It's John McAfee. Damn it. Yeah. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Jim, Damn it. I mean, you watched the movie? Or? I did, yes. And his name is in the title. That's oh. the worst part. Okay. It's, uh, it's Gringo... The John McAfee story. But maybe that's not the word I should be using. It's the dangerous life of John McAfee. Fine. That's not a fine. It is a dangerous life of John McAfee. Uh, He's living in Belize. He's running Belize. And three women on camera talked about what he liked sexually. And what he liked sexually, he didn't like anything that resembled what anyone in our audience would think of as normal sex. He would cut a hole in a hammock. Make sure the women ate heartily. And then would consume whatever came through the hole in that hammock. June 30th, giant Billy the Marlin pool folk giveaway. Next, you're holding up the line, ma'am. What did you say? You're next in line for the water slide, ma'am. Feet forward and enjoy the ride. Okay, dearie, this does look fun. Whee! Oh, you melted me. I've melted. 
the Wicked Witch of the West on a water slide? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to GEICO. See what you've done! Oh! GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Don Levitard. I've been watching this show about swords where they make swords out of, like, junkyard material on the History Channel. I'm hoping there's some new episodes of that I could see on demand. That would be nice. Forged in Fire, it's called. Stugats! They give you, like, a random thing, and you have three hours, and you need to forge that piece of metal, whether it's, like, a spring from a truck or, like, just a random piece of, like, tractor. And you need to get that into, like, part of a blade that they give you. So then, after that, they eliminate the person that hasn't done that the best. There's four people when you start. And then the next round, you need to give it a handle, and then they eliminate someone from there. And then, after five days, you have three tests, and they come back, and it's more like strength tests and stuff. And then they choose the Forged and Fire champion. $10,000. Whoa. This is the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats on the ticket. Join the Beer Jedis at Jay we- uh, Wakefield Brewing for their annual May the 4th Be With You event. I like that. Enjoy Star Wars themed beers in your best cosplay for a chance to win prizes from a galaxy far, far away. Yes, I was asking there. Your favorite sandwiches will be served by Mr. Cheesius Food Truck. Live music by DJ Yoda. Miss Cheesius. Uh, it's a fun. You are, you are reading that as if you're approaching a speed bump. It is so it's obvious. It's a very weird reading. No, but it's so obvious. Strange event. I mean. It is so obvious. Roy, please. You blaming the event? No, Roy. I'm not blaming the event. I just say, sure, I'm entitled to my Roy. opinion. I All have right. to. Mike, go get Cowboy Hat Made of Bacon for us, please. Please get that. And Roy, I want you somewhere in the show today to find a place to just put something in front of Stugatz that he's going to start reading and get himself in trouble. At some point during the show today, Boy, find bad. a place to stick Stugatz with a read that's going to get all of us in trouble because he reads things for the first time live on air. All right, got him with the sports center today. Great. Right. trouble. That's trying to get me fired. Join the Beer Jedis at Jay Wakefield Brewing for their annual May the 4th Be With You event. It's a weird event. Enjoy Star Wars-themed beers in your best cosplay for a chance to win prizes from a galaxy far, far away. Your favorite sandwiches will be served like Miss Cheesiest Food Truck, live music by DJ Yoda, Jay Wakefield Brewing is an independently owned craft brewery in the heart of Wynwood Arts District. We love it there. We do. Just a weird event. We have Jay Wakefield gift cards to give away. Caller 7 right now to the ticket contest line at 786-534-0790 wins. That's 786-534-0790. Caller 7 wins a gift card to my favorite place, Jay Wakefield Brewing. I mean, you're trying to fix it, but you botched it a number of different ways, and I want to reexamine what you did there. Okay. You read poorly and lazily and then decided that Jay Wakefield had a weird promotion. Like you were on, you were in on the promotion when you were reading well. Yeah. Yeah. And then you started reading <laughs> poorly and you turned on the company and the sponsor. Well, you noticed. And that, then you huh? said weird event, weird event. You realized, Oh my God, they're going to take some of my money. Uh, we love those people at Jay Wakefield. Name one of them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, name one of them. Jay. Jake is the joke you said in your headset. Shad Jay and Wakefield. Tim. The knuckleballer. <laughs> uh, Mike, get the cowboy hat made of bacon. One time, we've only done this to Sugats, I think, one time. And unfortunately, I made the mistake of about 40 seconds in, I burst out laughing because I couldn't stop anymore. I, I couldn't handle it anymore. But Sugats has this funny thing where on top of being lazy and on top of reading poorly, uh, he will read things for the first time on air, and he's not retaining what he's reading. It's just all he's hearing is a cash register. I get paid per word. I get paid per word. Ding, 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 ding. What's going on with my fantasy league? Got to call Inferno. I don't get paid for this one. Jay Wakefield's never given me a penny. Okay. Perhaps that's why I'm not right. uh, so taking that, it so why, seriously. That's yeah. why you read it poorly. right? I love Jay Wakefield. I right. mean, Jay and Timmy, I mean, great guys. So here is Stugatz. We just put a piece of paper in front of him. Again, he retains nothing. Like he's, it goes from the pages to his face, somewhere near his brain, and then comes out of his mouth. But it doesn't actually enter his brain. Okay. It sort of detours. There's, <laughs> there's al- my checking account. There's always a detour <laughs> through the checking account. So here's Stugatz reading something, retaining nothing. 
Follow the herd. Nearly 300 head of cattle into the heart of Miami. Admissions free. Don't miss the horse shows, arts and crafts, all the plants and flowers you can buy. A farmer's market, dog skill show, live bands, great food, and more. Like their cowboy hat made of bacon. Kids will love petting the cows, cougars, donkeys, mules, ducks, birds, rattlesnakes, and everyone's favorite, alligator wrestling for the kids. And the huge fun zone. A great well, event. Right, another. <laughs> there's some liability issues, but yes, yeah, a great event. Uh, you can with uh, with no hands, you can try and take off your cowboy hat made of bacon because the animals have eaten your hands. Also, you're going to need some sort of anti venom that you arrive at the farmers market at. When can you guys do this to Sugats when he's unsuspecting? Oh man, anytime they want, pretty much. All right. We gotta let's let's do it this way. Let's plant an Easter egg here. At one point this week, we're gonna try it. It doesn't have to be today. We're gonna God, we haven't done that in ten years, have we? Have we No, no. Uh that was ten years ago, you think? Yeah, probably. It's a long time ago. Yeah. I'm glad you haven't done it in ten years. I am. I'm thankful for that. I've just done it all on my own since then. <laughs> I mean this thing's been sitting here for thirty minutes. I could have read it. You really could have. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh Guillermo. I want to know your feelings about more giveaways. They have a Jose Urania Players Weekend giveaway jersey, which is pretty <laughs> dope. They have this floral print giveaway, and they have a pullover, which looks like like those batting practice ones. If they're good quality, I mean, that's tempting. You know when I am actually tempted to go is when uh, when Ozuna's coming back, because I like Ozuna. I want to see Ozuna. But I don't want to go for the Yankees series because that's going to be so annoying. There's going to be so many Yankees fans. That are going to, I don't well, want to listen one, to it, the well, Yankees Well, that would get the biggest fans. crowd of the year, right? The Yankees? Oh, for sure. It's only, it's I'm two going. games. I'm going then. Yeah, Chris is going but somehow bought tickets to the wrong day. He wanted to welcome back Stanton but got tickets to game two. <laughs> a strange. That sounds like something that back. would happen in the Cody family. And the next move is that he'll return those days. Like, Allison will get them for free and then he won't use them. That's that, Or maybe that's just graduate level Cody. <laughs> We all have our flaws on this show. Man. That's true. There's no disputing that. Yes, I, I, we are weird as a, as a, as an, as an amorphous entity, a blob. We are weird. What's going on with our therapy couch? Have we lost it forever? It's just gone because we can't get a cot. We may uh, get it back when uh, tourism slows down. That was crazy. On Check the back in November. Weekend. It is crazy. I don't know what the hell was going on down here this weekend. There wasn't any big event and everybody was naked. Like, it was just blankets of nudity. I didn't know whether it was waves lapping upon shore or boobs. I checked to see if we had a budget with TV for a uh, a couch. And uh, Lorenzo was like, why would you ask me that? I'm like, you're the TV guy. <laughs> so we're still waiting back to see if Who's we have a budget. Who's in charge around It's here? a good question because there's lots <laughs> of question, people. Actually. It depends. It depends really what's going on. Because, like, if things slip through the cracks, no one's in charge. If things no, need I, no, to get no, done, no. everyone's hold in on, charge. Hold on, listen to this. I think the best story that here's here's my favorite story. This is my favorite story with any of the, any of these calamities that have gone on around here uh, because we're a uh, flying saucer of BS and a marching band to nowhere. <laughs> the day we did that disaster of an internet show that got us into all sorts of trouble and whatever, I cursed and I, I don't even know what happened. Just nonsense happened we did something here draft party saturday night and it was it was a failure that really just it 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 it's about as bad as anything we've ever done wasn't a draft day thing it was dunk levitar that's fine what did i say draft levitar yeah, yeah it's a fine who's this we because uh i don't remember doing this okay no you were not uh you were invited but you you come up you came up with a concoction of family lies that uh, didn't allow you to just make the drive down here lacrosse mitzvah yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I said, I've got, has he, has he gotten so, have the lies become so redundant that at this point he just merges them? I've got a lacrosse bits for this weekend and nobody even notices. <laughs> Got a couple of those coming up here. In the, <laughs> I got a mitzvah tournament this weekend. <laughs> so, um, I mean, one of the great joys of doing this nonsense which is we've somehow stumbled into a place where the worse we are, the funnier it is, which is something that people like. So a lot of people watch that disaster. Except for that day. Well, right. So anyways, so no one was in charge that day. But I'll tell you what happened at the end. Mike is sitting alone in that sad, sad room next to us. That sad, sad room that's just, it's just a vacant room. 
I don't know what goes on there. It's just an empty space haunting the hallways of the Clevelander. Mike is sitting in the room after this disaster. I've cursed on the Internet. This is an atrocity, of course. We can't have this. I showed up late, a couple drinks in. And uh, and so the whole thing, everyone's exited. The party has left. When, you know how after a carnival people have to clean up or after a parade people have to clean up? And Mike's sitting in the middle of this sewage. No one's in charge, right? No one's in charge, but it would appear at this point that Mike was the one in charge. How do I know? Because he's sitting in the middle of this sewage, as sad as he's ever been, broken in half. And what happens? Somebody shows up and hands him the bill. (laughs) The only person who walks into the room doesn't do so with soothing or congratulations. It's just, here's... Who's in charge around here? <laughs> well, the other live stream that we and got Mike's nominated looking, for Mike, an Emmy. Mike, Mike's ah. looking. <laughs> Everyone's in charge of that one. Right. Yeah, yeah, I was here for that oh, one. Man. Yeah. No so many Mitzvah. people yeah. in charge of that yeah. one. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. The rare weekend with no lacrosse mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing how alone I was after this Emmy nominated performance. On the heels of that, everybody right. just bailed. It's I'm weird. pretty sure you were sobbing. You were in the middle of the room sobbing when they handed you the check. Which, who knows who pays it? Probably ended up with Mike on Mike's card. No reimbursement. Oh, no, it ended up on Mike's card. No, no, with no reimbursement. Anybody want to go dibs on that? Or we're only going to go dibs on the Emmy? I wasn't planning on going dibs on the Emmy. Just you? Yeah. I think your name might be left <laughs> off. <laughs> what? Oh, that, wait a minute. I, is that what I overheard you guys talking about the other day? Is that what I overheard you guys saying? Stu Gatz is going to be hurt when his name's not on it? Well, they asked me, <laughs> oh, one, one of the, yeah. uh, the corporate, uh, producers, the yeah, higher right ups now. asked me for the production team that I worked with in producing this. And I, I put the shipping container because that's who planned th- this stuff. And um, I sent it in. And then I kind of felt a little guilty a week after because I was like, wait a second. is he, Did I just leave it up to him to put Dana or Stugatz's name up on this? Because he just asked me for producers. And I had all this guilt because maybe I should have put Stugatz and Dana Mike, on there. Mike, this needs to win an Emmy. Like for our show, it ne- this ne- this is the most important Emmy our show will ever crave. The one for that disaster, getting an award for it, and not knowing whose name to put on it. <laughs> I think it's Roy's name that should be on it, right? Because it's for sound or oh, something, oh, isn't it? No, no, no. It uh, the it's not for sound. the The entire production got nominated, so it's a production Emmy. The whole thing. Yeah, so yeah. this was a mega cast in a lot of different cities. So every producer that had a hand in this is nominated. So Roy wouldn't have to share the Emmy. No, Roy would have his own Emmy. Yeah, yeah. but Stugatz wouldn't. No. What? Don Lebatard. I've made a vow to not correct Stugatz all show today on any mistakes, not point out any of his mistakes as part of a continued quest to do better and be better. Stugatz. Yep, and I have vowed to try and be 1% less worse than I normally am. That's what you asked, and that's what I'm going to try to do. 1%. I'm trying here, man. I am. <laughs> this is the Dan Lebatar show with the Stugats on the ticket. So I'm on Twitter and I see a bunch of Dolphins fans are really upset that they didn't get a quarterback. Right. Didn't get a quarterback. And Stugats, I know your general principle is always take a quarterback, but I think you can look at this from a different angle. Being a Jets fan and myself being a Browns fan, mm-hmm. we're always looking for a quarterback. Of course. That position's been a plague. We've never had one. <laughs> and I just don't understand how Dolphins fans can be so worked up about not getting a quarterback when they have one. Yeah, I think they think he's Andy Dalton, though, and he's not. He's not, but yeah. I think they think he's Andy Dalton. But your head coach, is t- they had a chance to get some guys they had no expectation of getting headed into the draft. Josh Rosen being one of them, Josh Allen being another guy. They didn't do it. All they had to do was trade up a couple spots. They get one of those guys, Josh they didn't Allen, do it. No, not Josh Allen, was, uh, not Josh Allen wasn't one. Well, the Bills traded up to seven to get him. Oh, the Dolphins you, were sitting there at 11. Like okay. The Bills traded to get yeah, him. Yeah, once Rosen came off the board, but the Dolphins did have that quote. Uh, Beasley reported that they were going to take Fitzpatrick even if Rosen were there. And I know that would have made a lot of Dolphin fans even more furious 
players than they are now, but it's just not a priority. Look, you took Ryan Tannehill in the top 10. You nailed that draft pick. That's not a miss. That's not a meh. You hit on that draft pick. I know he's had two eight torn ACLs in the last year, and you're worried about that. But if he's healthy, he's a good player. You don't need a quarterback. You nuke this team. Why are you screaming for a quarterback? You have you know, so many holes. One of the things that I think is interesting about that is, and this is going to bear monitoring, Adam Gase has always linked up at the hip with whoever his quarterback is. And so if he kept trusting Jay Cutler that way all of last season, imagine what he's going to extend to somebody who's actually above average. Right. Right. Yes. Like imagine the loyalty. Like and he, young. he is going to tie himself to Tannehill and this thing blows up. He took the job because Tannehill was here. That's not conjecture. That's fact. Right. He took the job because among the available bad jobs, he thought the best quarterback possibility was here. He sinks or swims with Ryan Tannehill, and the problematic part of that is if your assessment is that Tannehill is Andy Dalton, it's not my assessment, but if that's your assessment and this coach is only in charge for another season and a half, that's where the Dolphin fan gets upset with why didn't you draft a quarterback. Tannehill's in this weird situation where it feels like, and I know he didn't play last year, but his last three seasons have been, okay, make or break. We're going to figure out what we have here. I thought he passed the test in Gase's first year. They made the playoffs. He got hurt. That's unfortunate. But he proved himself to be a valuable quarterback, your franchise guy, and a pick that you that you delivered and, and, and hit a home run on. Well, I know he's not Aaron Rodgers, but that's a good quarterback in this league. No one's Aaron Rodgers, but Dan is right. Like he is, he's hitching his wagon to Tannehill. He, Adam Gase is telling you with his draft, I'm confident moving forward with Tannehill. And Mike, the last three years, he's been good. Seventy touchdowns, thirty six okay, interceptions. No, hold last on. three years. Do me a favor. I mean, this number, if you have it up on your computer. What was his quarterback rating the year that Gase got here? Because I think what I'm about to say is going to be true, and I think it's going to be a little bit jarring to the audience if the audience thinks that Tannehill is either not good or average. The year that Gase got here. So Gase was here, what, 2015, right? Was his, uh, was for two years ago. So 88.7. I believe that's higher than Tom Brady's career quarterback rating. It might be. And then 2016, he played 13 games, got hurt. Matt Moore uh, came in. He had a 93.5 quarterback What rating. is Tom Brady's career quarterback rating? I think it's about there. It might be a little bit lower than that. Now, maybe you don't trust quarterback rating. When was Gase's first year? Because I think it right, might have been 16. That's 16. that's important. Right, 16. Yeah, 16. Because okay. yeah, Gase, I mean, Tannehill's not going to have any stats for 2017. So he went up from 88.7 to 93.5. That's a phenomenal rating. No, dude. but 93.5. What is Tom Brady's career quarterback rating? Just to put it into context so you understand the season that Tannehill had when Gase got here and where that trust comes from, from Gase. 97.6. Tom okay. Brady's good. I mean, yeah, okay. Tannehill's right there. I mean, it, it's hard when you're comparing him to the greatest quarterback ever. Right. I mean, he's at last two two out of the last three years, 92.8, 93.5. That middle year was 88.7. He's been good. Mike, help me out with something on quarterback rating because I, I think the last time I looked at that stat, I had it right. Has Tom Brady's last three or four seasons skyrocketed in terms of quarterback rating what yes. has his quarterback rating been the last three seasons that because he <laughs> used to be right in the, either in the low 90s or high 80s uh you're gonna laugh here you're right because all the years so i'm gonna go back three years ago but four years three years leading up to the last three years dan it's been 90s and high 80s okay but the last three years it's been 102.2 112.2 and 102.8 here's a more fair comp Former NFL MVP Matt Ryan, his career rating is ninety three point four. Tannehill's first year with Adam Gase was better than that. See, this there. is what this is what Gase would believe. I would think the MVP type year that Matt Ryan had. If you get a number one receiver, that's why they let Jarvis Landry go. Sorry, not a number one. If you get a number one receiver, Gase believes that he can be what Kyle Shanahan. What Kyle Shanahan did as offensive coordinator to get the Falcons to that Super Bowl, right? Gase believes he can be that for Ryan Tannehill. If Ryan Tannehill is comparable to Matt Ryan, all you need, 
He's he's getting out of here. The Jay Ajayis, the Mike Pounceys. He's saying Jarvis Landry, get out of here. Trying to make room for somebody who could be a bleeping number one. Well, it's kind of banking. I mean, just based on the roster right now, Devontae Parker. I don't. Know. I know, but why would you believe for a second that that was something that was going to be like Julio Jones? Devontae Parker scares no one. Nope. Scares no one. Well, Tannehill now is in a tough position coming off an ACL, and now we're really going to find out if he's that franchise quarterback because he has to buoy an entire franchise because his best weapons on that offense over the last few seasons are gone now. Mike, I really do think that even as a giant arm gets Josh Allen drafted, I think the perception of Tannehill gets altered just because he's a big-armed guy, and you don't really trust him to be accurate the way Tom Brady's accurate. Right. Accurate the way Drew Brees is accurate. You don't trust him with that big arm to control it. Yeah, his arm's too big on deep throws. Those uh, those too, are really deep passes no, that go to the sideline. Too big on deep throws and too too strong on seven yard throws, too. Although he had a completion percentage that was Oh no, he was Gase brought it in sixty seven point one. No, Gase brought it in and but I'm thinking I'm talking about what the perception is of Tannehill if you're someone who believes look, we're on record as a show. This is an above average quarterback. Yes. But most of the audience, I don't believe, believes that. I understand why Dolphin fans draft, what did Tannehill go, seven? It, it, it was early. Why they want that guy, why they expect a pick that high to be in the conversation with Tom Brady and, and have an MVP award. It's just not how this sport works, man. You're lucky you got that because you never draft quarterbacks that high in your franchise's history. Rarely ever. And you nailed them when you do. Tannehill's a hit. I'd kill for Ryan Tannehill. Oh, yeah. Kill for uh, it as a Browns fan. Same here. Yep. He was drafted eighth, by the way, 2012. But you're right, Mike. I would give anything to have him Ryan Tannehill I'd for love a to have the years. success rate that they have <laughs> on drafting quarterbacks. You're you're fine there. You got to help that quarterback out with your other draft picks. Not not complain just because you want a quarterback every round. It's ridiculous. Can I hear Ilyasova's sound in Ilyasova's voice? Uh, Ilyasova has Heat fans bothered today the devoted the loyals the ones who weren't in the bathroom snorting cocaine at tip off way different atmosphere you know when it was in miami it was you know gym was half empty but i mean those kind of things you know we not expect but i mean when you go to boston you will feel it you know and uh even you know during the regular season you know when you play that you know the arena is full and you know really commitment fans when you go to Miami, the gym's half empty. When we go to Boston, you can feel it. I don't think that the Sixers felt anything from Miami. Like, they should leave here with that. They they won both games here, one of them playing awfully. They should feel like the crowd had no impact on them whatsoever, and they get to say whatever they want. Yeah, it, it's a weird quote. I was at one of those games. I, I know we're late arriving and at the start of the well, first and Well, Stugatz and I were, were at, were we all at the same yeah. one? Cause that yes. one wasn't half that, empty. That one wasn't that was half both. empty. That was good. In, uh, we're always going to be susceptible to this and we're always going to get defensive. There is truth to it because when you start out a game, lower bowl, and I say just lower bowl because that upper deck is always packed for the tip. The lower bowl's a late arriving crowd. They're busy doing other things. It's a cool arena. Yeah. There's a lot of amenities there. And we're running on Cuban time, damn it. And he doesn't get to say whatever he wants to say. He does not. That is not reserved for Ilyasova. Sorry. The way he played in that series? He's Ilyasova. I understand, I, I, but the he, way he played no, no. in that series. In that series, nope. he wasn't Ilyasova, though. In that series, he was Moses Malone. It, you know what? But Yeah, playing with... No, he was playing with Moses Malone. That's what he well, was doing. No, Joel Embiid. You do not okay? remember that series the way that I do. I, listen, I know he, he got was got every important time, rebound. Time out. I know he was good in that series. Time out. I know he's good in that series. The I know. Turned every time they checked him in. Embiid could say it. Simmons could say it. Maybe even Covington can say it. Covington. Ilyasova can't say it. Oh, God. Can't it. say it. Ilyasova had such an impact. Oh, Mike only had an impact because wait, he's on this team. Wait, time okay? in. Ilyasova is never a reason time this in. team is good. Time Ever. in. Time in. Ilyasova no, can time absolutely out. say that. Time in. Ilyasova can absolutely say he that. He can't do it. This is one that Heat fans are going to have to take on the chin. No. It's the reputation. <laughs> no. It's earned. And it's one of those things that you'll just lift up if you ever win and get to rub it in their face if, if, so. when you have the result. The problem is that whole result thing for the next 20 years. Nope. We, Can't say it. We, uh, we had a poll question last week. Did the Heat contain Ilyasova? 
There, did they hold him down? Did they hold him in check for a game? That was Ilyasova was the greatest nightmare in that series, slinking and slithering around everything. And next thing you know, it's another putback. Like you finally stop Simmons and Embiid. Right. Woo, you could yeah. breathe easy. And then this guy comes in here and bleeps you in the bleep. Right. Let's see how he does in a team that doesn't have Simmons and Embiid on it. I mean, you've seen it throughout his career. Yeah. He was on the Hawks. <laughs> right. Exactly. With Bellinelli. A guy who should not be criticizing other teams' arenas and their attendance plays. And by the way, 10 years, for 10 years, that Philadelphia arena was not crowded at all. Okay? That bandwagon town jumped on that team the second Embiid and Simmons became good. Please. I don't want to hear it from him. I just don't. Uh, how many people showed up to Sixer games for the last 10 years? Nobody. That's the answer. Nobody. Um, Riley has his, uh, State of the Union address here. How's this one going to go? Because you look at their roster, their assets. Like if, if they say they're building from within, that is not a winning model. If, if they're banking on, well, justice will get better and Richardson will get better and Bam will get better. That ain't winning you bleep. I know this isn't a main, uh, angle on this whole Riley thing, but I don't see it being discussed. And maybe should we just ask the question, how long is this guy going to be here? Is there a chance that this is a retirement ceremony? Has anyone even considered this? I mean, it's. I don't think it's ridiculous to throw out there. I haven't talked to him in a, in a while, but he's always talking retirement. And some of the things that he's done this last year is the first time I can remember him missing games because he was doing things with his wife for her 70th, 70th birthday. And he did big things for her. Like this was planning. He did big things for her because she's been at his back for a long, long time supporting all of this nonsense through kids and now grandkids. And he's been talking about retiring forever. Right. Like he really has, but she doesn't believe he will. Like she rolls her eyes for 10 years. His wife rolls her eyes, but this is the first year. This is the first time that he's done these big sweeping gestures in the middle of a season where she's been deeply moved by him and him being home. Well, it's a big birthday. I mean, the big 7-0. He, he also, I will say something else, too. They 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 did the same thing with their wedding anniversary. They did the same thing. Uh, the other thing that has changed him a bit, and this should be interesting, uh, as he goes into his State of the Union press conference, and I do not know what he is going to say, he has been appreciably altered by having a grandchild around. Because, and I don't know how many of you uh, know this, I think both of Riley's kids are, are adopted. Um, I'm not sure about that, but I think I think that's so. And he missed a good chunk of their childhood because he was out achieving and writing books and doing self-help stuff. And so here he is at 70, and he's kind of getting to be around for the cool stuff. And I think he wants to be around it more. And I think it's the only thing that could pull him away from this. Because he's been wanting to get back out to Malibu forever. Right. Can't balance both, though. Can't enjoy yeah, some no, of the cool stuff. No, you can enjoy both. Shop. But what I'm saying is when when you weren't around to take care of your children, like because the job took you away and was all consuming. Sure. Right. Uh, and you get a chance at parenthood, again, at his age, when you're looking at morality, you know, or pa something that feels like parent. Right, right, right. Something that feels uh, because your grandchild is around all the time. I'm not a front office wizard, but I am a homer that's been training Wayne Simeon for Michael Red since 2006, okay? This is a daunting challenge. I could, I, I, who could make the argument, looking at the roster that Philadelphia has and their assets in Boston and looking at your own, saying, how am I going to do this? But at the same time, this is an off season where he can fix something with LeBron. Not get LeBron here. We're not talking about that. I we'll am. get excited when they have that meeting. Whatever. But he can actually fix something and get some sort of resolution. There. Well, I, I do think, though, that if something like LeBron were to end up here or if something like Kawhi were to end up here, um, I, I don't think, man, I don't think he would leave it in this condition. Where, where that stuff is that obvious. Right. Where you've got Boston and Philadelphia, and you know you're not going to catch them for a while. Boston and Philadelphia are better than you with all sorts of injuries. With all sorts of injuries. They've got more assets. Like, this is an arduous climb. I just, I don't think this is the way that it ends. But the Riley State of the Union is today, and I suppose it's a possibility. So check it out. Everyone in the neighborhood knew about Bobby. 
Bobby the basketball boy, they called him. Bobby wanted to go pro someday, so he was always out in the driveway shooting hoops. But one day, his mom came out and told him, Hey, your wife wants you to take out the trash? His mom was visiting, and Bobby was a grown man. He had kind of missed his window. Plus, no one had ever seen him actually make a basket. But on the other hand, Bobby had heard how Geico could save him money on car insurance. So he switched and saved. So it was all good.